There's been no shortage of rain across large parts of the country today, so it may come as a shock to hear that Britain's first water desalination plant has just opened in East London, turning salt water into something we can drink. Maybe common practice in the scorching heat of the Middle East, but our science correspondent Fergus Walsh has been finding out why some feel we need a plant here. On a grey day, with rain threatening along the Thames, it's hard to imagine that London could ever run short of water. But it's come close in the past. So now these giant pipes are sucking salty water from the river into Britain's first desalination plant. London actually gets less rain than places that we think of as hot and dry, like Rome, Dallas, Istanbul. We get half as much rain as Sydney. And the rain we get, quite a lot of it is in the summer. And this rain doesn't soak down into the ground. It evaporates or the plants suck it up. So there's not a lot of water and there are six million of us in London using that water. The brackish tidal water is filtered and purified. And then the process of desalination begins. By the time the water gets here, it's completely clean, but it's still salty. It's inside these pipes that it's turned into drinking water, enough for a million people every day. The salt water is forced through the tubes at high pressure. Inside are layers of fine membranes, which are pitted with holes just one nanometer, one millionth of a millimeter wide. The salt molecules are too big to pass through, so they get separated from the water, which is now desalinated. Providing water for the London area is quite an engineering challenge. Six million people get through an awful lot of it. In fact, an average of 2,000 million litres every day. And London isn't as rainy as people think. It gets half as much rain as Sydney and less than sun-soaked cities like Rome and Dallas. Despite cutting leakage, installing water meters and educating customers to use water wisely, fresh water supplies are already at their limit. And this is set to continue as climate change threatens hotter, drier summers and a relentless population growth puts further pressure on existing water sources. London running dry is just not an option. Thames Water had to find a new supply that could, when needed, provide the capital with extra water quickly, efficiently and sustainably. So what's the solution? It's a new treatment works at Beckton, East London, which uses desalination to turn brackish water from the tidal Thames into drinking water. Run on electricity generated from biofuels like used cooking oil, the new 270 million pound works and pipeline have been designed to be as sustainable and efficient as possible. In fact, it's the world's first four-stage reverse osmosis system, turning 85% of water taken from the tidal Thames into drinking water, compared to about 50% at other desalination plants around the world. But how did they do it? The location was key in making the design as efficient as possible. We sited the desalination plant uh, at this point because this is land that Thames Water owns and it's as close as we can get to the source of the river in terms of the water coming down towards the sea. So this was a good spot for us. We had a pilot plant which we set up in this area so we could test the water that we would actually abstract. And during that pilot plant testing, we developed the designs for the water treatment works. Seven submerged pumps extract water from the Thames during the last three hours of the outgoing tide when the water is least salty. The water is then piped into storage tanks via two 1400 millimetre glass pipes which are reinforced with epoxy. The water that we take is far enough upstream to ensure that we capture as much fresh water that's coming down the river um, and less salt content. We found that the salinity of the water vary considerably between the high tide and the low tide. Um, we then looked at, well, if we took the water out a lot quicker and if we could store it somewhere, that means that we would be able to treat lower salinity water, which would mean the plant would be smaller, more sustainable and use less energy. Thames Water refurbished four existing storage tank facilities on the site, which can hold 180 million litres of water. Angled inlets create a figure of eight flow pattern to ensure water coming into the tanks is rapidly mixed. This keeps salt content evenly balanced, which improves efficiency of the filtering system and the reverse osmosis process. 
The water is then pumped into lamella clarifiers by four variable speed submersed pumps. A coagulant is added to make suspended material stick together and settle out, a process used at many of Thames Water's existing treatment works. The water is then filtered through a one metre bed of sand based material housed in stainless steel tanks to prevent salt corrosion. The water then enters the main section of the works where it goes through a final clean before the reverse osmosis process starts. The salt is then removed by forcing the water under high pressure through seven very fine spiral bound membranes with pore sizes less than one nanometer wide. The water collects in a central tube and leaves the salt behind. There are 10,000 membranes stored in vessels and if laid out flat, they'd have the same surface area as 54 football pitches. This is a crucial part of the process. This is where the clean, salty water comes in to go through the reverse osmosis process. This is the world's first four-stage reverse osmosis and it means that the water that comes in, 85% of that is turned into drinking water. To make the process efficient, each reverse osmosis stage has its own feed pump, which can be adjusted to suit the salinity of the water. This means that the process never uses more power than necessary. The wastewater saline solution is then combined with effluent from the sewage works and discharged into the estuary. Power consumption is also monitored in real time, allowing Thames water to meet site demands efficiently and cost effectively. At the end of the fourth stage, we take the energy off the end, pass it through Pelton turbines and that recovers energy. So the only energy that's used in here is what's required for the process alone. At the heart of the project has been the desire to protect the environment and to ensure sustainability, not only throughout the construction phase, but once the plant is operational. At the abstraction point where water is taken from the river, three millimeter screens have been installed to prevent fish and larvae from being pulled into the intake. Before each abstraction, acoustic sound barriers and air blast systems are activated to drive fish away from the area. Abstractions will be avoided at times of high tide when there is more activity in the ecosystem. Existing redundant structures have been crushed and recycled as fill material for the plant. 145,000 cubic meters of stored sludge have also been cleared, processed and recycled to land. To minimize the consumption of electricity, the switchboards are chilled by process water, avoiding the use of conventional air conditioning. The energy used by the plant is generated on-site from biofuels to produce renewable energy. Minerals are then added to the desalinated water to make it taste as much like traditional tap water as possible. It's then pumped into existing supplies via a new 14 km pipe. In tests, some customers prefer desalinated water and most couldn't tell the difference. The Becton desalination plant is not only the world's most advanced reverse osmosis plant, but the most environmentally sustainable. This complex project contains a significant number of innovations which are focused on improving sustainability and protecting the environment. But it's expensive, costing three times as much per litre to produce as standard tap water. Environmental campaigners say it would be better to save water. We use about 150 litres per person per day. That's about half a tonne of water for the average family every single day. Our European neighbours use about 30 to 40 litres less than that. So what we should focus on first is getting people to reduce their consumption. OK, and this is our new shower head. This house in Surrey has had a series of water-saving gadgets fitted, such as aerators, which reduce flow but maintain pressure. This bag saves a litre of water each flush. Thames Water says it won't need to switch on the desalination plant until there is a drought, so it remains a backup to ensure the taps will keep flowing. Gateway can produce up to 150 million litres a day. That's enough for a million people. And thanks to that forward-looking approach, when the next drought arrives, this state-of-the-art facility means London will always be prepared.